At the end of this moment, as his right leg steeled itself to support his weight, as his head craned upward from his neck in a tiny, imperceptible gesture, as his toes strained the cloth of his slippers, Teo understood with great clarity that this would be the most perfect dance of his life. That his body would spin, stretch, and soar. That there was nothing he could not do. Now he was ready, and with a touch of melancholy mixed with the unbridled excitement of youth, he sent a wordless farewell to his moment, pointed the toes of his left foot as taut as a freshly sharpened pencil, and sailed into the music. Vivi walks, mumbling to herself, for nearly an hour. Only when she steps in front of a taxi and is nearly plowed down does she realize that she has ambled in a roundabout manner all the way to Jaffa. She climbs upstairs into the old city, past the stacked stone houses and over the wishing bridge, to the little park, where she makes her way to one particular bench, as if this whole walk had been planned for this very purpose. Suddenly fatigued and lonely, Vivi breathes deeply to stave off sadness. She lights a cigarette and calms herself by looking out at the night blackened sea, then toward the sparkling towers and bright bustling streets of Tel Aviv. Her mind fills with memories she has not allowed to visit her for years and years. She sits with them, her stories, her history, on a bench in a park in Old Jaffa, and for once, she does not run away. Theo and Vivi are characters in my new novel, When We Danced on Water, a book about passion and obsession and how far people will go to get what they want. When you meet him, Theo is 84 years old and in failing health. But once, not all that long ago, he was a dancer with the Royal Danish Ballet and a student of Balanchine. He also had some harrowing experiences in World War II he'd rather forget. For the last 50 years, he's been head of the Tel Aviv Ballet and a choreographer of international repute, but he hasn't had a fresh idea in quite some time. Then Vivi storms into his life. She's a waitress at the cafe he frequents in Tel Aviv and an artist who dabbles in too many genres. She has some secrets of her own from her time as a soldier in the Israeli army. What happens between them will cause Teo and Vivi to rethink their art and to confront the disturbing events of their past that have kept them from realizing their potential both as artists and as people capable of loving. I invite you to join Theo and Vivi in Warsaw and Copenhagen, in Berlin and Tel Aviv, as they explore what constitutes a life fully and richly lived.